this is about a girl from a small town in Guanajuato, Mexico, and the, how this girl ended up in a national television in the United States. And by the end, you will know how to make a mean pico de gallo salsa. Stay with me. <laughs> uh, I like to tell my story through food. I was just five years old when my grandma handed me a bunch of tomatillos. They look like this, to peel, while my family was chatting and cooking in the kitchen. My grandma didn't like people doing nothing in the kitchen. She would always find you something to do. I still remember the joy I felt as I inhaled the aromas and listened to all these noises in the kitchen, from the poblano chile roasting in, on fire on the stove to the tortillas and hitting the blender running, and my mom and all my aunts talking at 20,000 words per minute while they were cooking and chopping vegetables. Uh, it always looked and sounded like a party to me. Little did I know how important these moments in the kitchen could become years later in a life I never could have imagined. At 12, I asked my mom and my grandma to teach me how to cook, and by 14, I was a chef in the house. But I never considered cooking as a career, and instead I went to college and graduated with a degree in industrial relations. I landed my dream job uh, coordinating the training of executive personnel in my alma mater. I thought my life was set. I would be an, a university employee uh, until I retire. And then I met a boy, <laughs> a San Luis Obispo native named Matt, who grew just two blocks from here. We met on Super Bowl Sunday, we got married and moved to Los Osos. In this new country, I realized I needed to reinvent myself. And after the birth of my two sons, I felt a deep desire and need really to pass my heritage to them. Beyond that, I needed to connect with other Latina bloggers, no, I'm sorry, just another Latina moms just like me, and to talk to someone older than four years old. So in 2009, while the boys were napping, I started my blog, Mama Latina Tips. That come. I remember clearly the day my husband arrived from, from work and I say, hi, honey, do you know what I did today? I started a blog. And he said, oh, that's nice, honey. And that's how my bilingual blog was born. But the funniest thing happened next. I noticed that the recipes I was publishing in order to preserve my own family's culinary history were getting a lot of traction and companies start noticing that as well. It dawned on me that I was becoming an entrepreneur without meaning to, and the blog became, became my full-time job. Now, fast forward 10 years or so, <laughs> a year ago, a casting producer asked me if I would be interested in auditioning for a new cooking show. Uh, the casting process landed me in Richmond, Virginia last September for the filming of the Great American Recipe from PB for PBS. The show is an eight episode uplifting family friendly cooking competition that showcases the melting pot that makes of American cuisine so unique. Every Friday night, home cooks from diverse backgrounds uh, from all over the United States cook two dishes that, and then talk about the stories behind the recipes. Of course, for me, um, it comes with a pressure of cooking under time in a kitchen that is not my own, the lights and the cameras on me all the time, having to talk while I'm trying to cook, and having renowned chefs judging my dishes but it's a lot of fun. Happily, I have survived up to now and I'm proudly representing San Luis Obispo County. The next episode is tomorrow night at 9 p.m. on KQED or on PBS SoCal. And if you haven't heard about the show, you can actually stream all the episodes until now on pbs.org or downloading the PBS video app on your favorite device. And now for that recipe, I promise in closing, are you ready? Uh, you need four Roma tomatoes, half a white onion, one serrano pepper or two if you like spicy food, and a bunch um, of cilantro. And you're going to chop all that and you're going to season with the juice of one lime and salt to taste. 
buen provecho and thank you very much.